Okay, this is Chris Caban with We Live, Eat, Sleep, Boxing on Facebook. And I'm here with the champ, Chop Chop Corley, 140, former 140 pound champ. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? It's an honor to be on this talk show with y'all. Look forward to doing more. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. Uh, go ahead, B. So, what's happening with the career now? Are we still looking for titles? Yeah, we are um, getting ready for a fight um, right now. It's in the works of uh, March 21st. We don't know um, if it's going to be John Molina or someone else. Um, they're trying to put it on ESPN, so that's what we're working on right now. March 21st, hopefully John Molina or someone else. Going down the lightweight for this fight, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not fighting at 40 no more unless the money's right. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, um, we're from the UK, and then um, you came over to fight Paul McCluskey, and and that that performance was masterful, man. Like you, you, hey boy, you just uh, you shocked everyone. Like, I mean, you came into the fight already, and you upset another guy, and you came over the, to the UK, and you upset Paul McCluskey in spectacular fashion, man. How about go through that again? And what was your, what, you know, what, what was going through you when you? I mean, you won, man. That was a big fight. So, like, take us through that Paul McCluskey upset. Um, there was an opportunity for me to travel to your country, which was Belfast Island. And, um, we knew fighting Paul McCoskey, I had to knock Paul out in order to win. It couldn't go to the scorecards. Mm. And from, from the beginning of our signing the contract, I said, the only way I'm going to win this fight is by a knockout. So the game plan was to keep applying pressure and, Make him make a mistake and then knock him out. He was giving Amir Khan problems, and then the way you beat him, man, it was like a throwback, throwback, uh, throw, throwback, man, throwback fight, man. Put him with some cooks. He never been, he never been beat up like that before, man. It was a good, it was a good, it was a good win, man. My other um, fight I like of yours is the Randall Bailey fight. I think that was a good performance. And why did you? Why didn't you have a chance to get Costa Zoo? Because you got a lot of good wins at 140. I don't know why we didn't get the fight with Costa Zoo at 140. But uh, I know I would have loved to fight him. But I got a chance to spar with him for the rematch with the Sean Bay Mitchell fight, and um, oh, it was a great experience for me. So I got a chance to spar with Costa Zoo also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, hey, professional, you're a professional. It is. And another thing is, well, you 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 hurt Carl as well. <laughs> you at the Floyd Angle, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? that was a good experience as well, man. Like you, you really hurt him. He was buzzed, man. And uh, like you know, you 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 know, there's a chance you could have stopped him, but I, I don't know what you know, the referee. I don't know, like you know, I, I, referee. I, yeah, that's yeah. You there said, you go. I, you I'll let you say it. Yeah, I let you. Yeah, word. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Sean Bay Mitchell was another fight that I wanted you to, that I really wanted to see you take. Because I felt at the time. I wanted, I wanted that fight. I wanted that fight. He didn't want to fight me. We don't like see. each other. You don't like it? Why is that? You f- What's the history? Yeah. It's a, it's a, the history, oh man. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. The history is years ago, if you can go back to box, I can find out when Sugar Ray Leonard for Hector Camacho in Atlanta City. It was that time. That's when we really started not liking each other. Oh, that's right. I didn't. Ahead. I didn't know. Huh? Go ahead. No, no, no sorry. Go ahead. Sure. No, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Go ahead. I was scared to fight on the Ray Leonard undercard, and my fight got canceled because my opponent got hurt. So we were at the fight, and I didn't know who this young lady was, and I don't think she knew who I was. So we were just talking, and we hooked up. And to make a long story short, he got back to Sean Bay that I was dealing with his baby mother. But I didn't know it was his baby mother. So I think that was one of the reasons why he started disliking me and started talking bad about me. Yeah, I think that was the reason why Sean Bay didn't, didn't care for me. It got back, it got that, back that, um, that um, I was dealing I was with his baby mother. He got his feelings hurt a little. got his feelings hurt. But when I found out who she was and that was his baby mother, I immediately stopped talking to her because I, that, that's, that's, that's not right. Okay. That's not your style. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, but he, that's and he still couldn't get over it even though he knew that 
you know, he was backing up, he still couldn't get over it? Nah, he never, he's right now to this day, he hate me. <laughs> That's my grudgeful man. That's my grudgeful man. So, um, you fought just around the corner for me and you lost your title to Junior Witter. What went wrong there? Well, it was actually the vacant title. It was the vacant title, but I know you worked hard to get your yeah. shot. So what went wrong? Um, he was just awkward. I was putting the pressure on him and he was, he was fighting at an awkward style. So I thought the fight was a close fight. I thought it should have been a split decision. But me fighting in England and his hometown, they're going to give it to the favorite guy. Yes, it was closer. It was it to the, it was closer. It was definitely was closer. I did have him winning though. I don't know if that's because I'm biased because I'm from the UK, but but you know I had just shade in it. But it was definitely close. If it was in America, it could have definitely went the other way. You know, that's a hazard of fighting away from home. And you fight away from home. Would you say a lot of your losses are down to some dubious judging, or are you just losing fair and square if it goes to points? I call a spade a spade. If I lost, I, I tell them I lost. But a lot of my fights out the country, I didn't lose. Lose Lauren Polofnikov, I didn't lose to him. Marcos Madonna, I didn't lose that fight. Mm. Um, the other Russian kid, um, Slitschaw, I didn't lose to him. But I'm fighting in their backyard. And they're looking to build their fight. Yeah, yeah, why is that, man? Like, you, you know, you're the WBA champion. I remember over here, we were talking about you in England. This is before, like, you lost to Zab. As one of the guys at, at the, that division, because Ricky Hatton was just coming. And, um, you know, I understand that, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you, you're right, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you know, Washington, you could build a nice fan base there, like the Petersons. Like, I understand, like, you could have took fights there, but since, ever since the fight with Zab, you've been, like you said, you've been fighting fights on the road. Why is that? Well, after the Zab Judah fight, um, that was in 2003, my contract was just about to be up with Don King, and he had locked me in for an extension. He didn't want to give me my release. So he held me up, and we still was on the contract promoted by Don King Productions, and he had me fighting, like, every maybe nine months. And if you notice, you look at the box rec, when I won the title, in 2001, I didn't defend it until another 11 months after I won. That's very odd for a, a champion to become world champion and don't defend his title for 11 months. And my first my first defense was in near Julio. My second defense was Randall Bailey. If you look at the time frame of that, that was a whole other year. And then I fought Zell Judah yeah. six months after that. Too much um, politics, bro. Too much politics. Yeah. Does that spot... Sorry, Chris. I mean... Does, does the politics sort of like spoil your experience as a boxer? No, it don't spoil my experience. I mean, it just makes me fight harder now. And that's one of the reasons why when I do travel and I fight a guy in his country, in his backyard, I go for the knockout. I don't want to leave it in the judge's hand. Okay. Mm. Over to you, Chris. Okay. I was wanting to know, after you gave um, Kodo that scare, what? Why didn't you try to get a rematch with Kodo? Because you had him hurt, and you was very competitive in that fight. We tried. We tried. But if you notice, Kodo was promoted by Bob Byrne. Yeah. I was promoted by Don King. And Kodo's people said they were going to give me a rematch. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a rematch. But they always say that. They just, they just say that just for TV. Oh, we're going to do a rematch. But if it's not signed and sealed that he has to give you a rematch, they're not going to give you one. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm. A rematch with Floyd would have been good though, because you get Floyd. That was an exciting fight, man. You, yeah. Let me ask you the question. I'm dying to know this. What were you and Floyd saying to against each other in that fight? You was talking like both of you started talking in the fight, man. What was you saying to each other? You remember? Yeah, I remember clearly. We were talking about um, one of the guys in the ambushes who he beat was my best friend James Baker, mm. and um, he was saying. Um, I'm going to beat you like I beat your friend, Baker. <laughs> what would you say back? I said, well, come on, bring it. Yeah, that's what I was seeing in both movements. And the referee, everyone's wondering what you was talking about. But you bloodied Floyd's mouth up. His lip was bleeding and you hurt him. That would have been a good rematch. That's why I was wondering why you sparred him. But I understand why you took the sparring. But like, that would have been a good rematch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it is what it is, man. But like, that was a good fight. You, you know, you gave Floyd a hard fight. 
Yep. Yes, that hurt. I was, I was hoping to, I was hoping to get the fight with Adrian Brunet when he came down to 140, but he don't want that rap. Hey, no, no, it's I'm, your experience for him probably right now. You know, could be a bit yeah. of a bad move for him. I need to ask though, right? Um, if you're going down to lightweight and you're 39 years of age and you spent the bulk <laughs> of your career, at, you know, at 140, how does that work? Because obviously your body's maturing now, and now you're going down in weight. Yeah, I mean. All I can say is God has been good to me in the sport of boxing. He allowed me to have over 60 fights, which is a, take, a total of 62 fights. Um, I have took care of my body very well. I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't run the streets. I have 11 children, and I have fun, and I play with my kids. You, so you just train very periodically? You don't take time off? No, I don't take no time off. I, I love what I do. I mean, I love to fight. Yeah, yeah. So what about taking? You want to take a fight in it? How about a fight in the UK? There, like we talked to Vivian Harris, he's got a fight over with some guy, Brian Spree. Brian How Street. about? Yeah, there's some fights in the UK over on, on some of the network, uh, Frank Warren, um, the Box Nation, and, and Sky. You know, you know, you'd fit in with someone, and you come over and beat up some of the UK guys like you did. Thing, man, I'm telling you, man, like I enjoy you coming over, and also we, when you come over to the UK, we can come meet you up as well, man. <laughs> okay. Be, yeah, um, man. Go you got? Do you have any connections? Because I'm not promoted by anybody. Anybody, I can fight anywhere on anybody network. You have some connections with the promoters? Um, give them my information, yeah. and um, we can set something up. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll be on that, man. I, I, we go. We in a uh, we in ten days time. We meeting up with Vivian. He got fight against Brian Skeet, and hopefully we're rolling with his entourage and Frank Warren. And now I'll talk to Frank Warren for you, man. I talk to him if okay, I get a chance, if I get a chance great. to talk to him I will because I talk to Eddie Hearn I have him on my sc- on my Twitter and um I, but I won't go see him for a while but I, if I get a chance I will talk to Frank Warren and hit him up say yeah, yeah. you're looking uh, yeah the markers are looking for some fights and um obviously yeah, we, I, obviously we got your number we got your number so we could just yep. see what happened okay and I was in I was over there in Spain with Eddie Hearn um when I worked with Carol Brooks I was spotted with Carol Brooks in Spain yeah. Well, <laughs> Um, Eddie knows who I am, and uh, he has Gavin Reese at 135. We'll fight yeah. him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know what the thing is, yeah, like the Marcus, yeah. I know you're you're moving down the weight, man. But you, 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 there's there's some guys at the 140 right now. I thought you can beat, like you see, uh, uh, Madonna and them guys, and some of them guys. You can beat them right now, man. Like you know what I'm saying. But uh, the, the, that weight class, that that they ain't got the money in that weight class. This 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 is my opinion, though. I know why, you know, you can do what you want. You're doing what you do because you know what's best for you. But that weight class ain't got the most money. Like 140, Danny Garcia and them guys, they, got, they you know, you can beat some of them guys down there, right? What do you feel? How do you feel? True. Yes, it's true, but you got to look at it. I'm 39. Danny Garcia is only 20, what, 5, 24? Yeah. Marcos Madonna, I think he's like 26. I'm fighting against the youth. So it's a wise decision for me if I can make 135, go down to 135, and be stronger and much bigger than the guys at 135. Okay. Daddy Garcia, that, I worked with Danny for the Zab Judah fight. Oh. Danny walked around at 155 pounds. He comes down to 140. Marcos yeah. Madonna walks around probably at 156 pounds. It's all coming down to 140, 147. These are big guys who blow up in weight. Like Lamar Peterson, he blows up to 160, 170 pounds when he's not fighting. Wow. It's big. That's a lot of weight, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, biggest, the biggest I ever get is 143 pounds wow. when I don't train. What'd you eat, man? What'd you eat, man? Because I know you, me and you the same age. You and me and you the same age, man. I know. I check your box, Rick. What'd you eat, man? Because you're in good shape, man. What'd you eat? You vegetarian? I, Yo, you know, go ahead. No, hell, hell no. Yeah, you look like you don't eat, eat everything. Oh, you eat, what? You can't even. I eat everything. You put it. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Tell us. Go to my Facebook. Go to my Facebook page. Go to yeah. my Instagram. You will see all the food in there. I eat. I eat everything. Where's it go though, man? It don't go nowhere though. Is is oh, you in great shape? <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, man. I, I, I'm confused, man. I'm confused right there, but hey, let, 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 well, the rumor, uh, not a rumor, like you got to uh, work as a, as a dressmaker or something, or do you do costumes or something like that, or lingerie um, uh, thing? What's what's? Get, let us in, let us know about that if you can. 
I'm a fashion designer. I pretty much design and sew everything that I fight in. I took it up in high school. I do know how to sew. I can make clothes. Okay. That's one of my trademarks. Okay. Now, who who does who do Chop Chop want at one thirty five right now? If you can call out a fighter, who do you want at one thirty five right now? Omar Figueroa, the new WBC champion, who was given his title. He didn't yeah. win it. Yeah, he didn't yeah. earn it. It was given. That's what to I. Him. That's what I said last night. Yep. <laughs> right, right. So what do Omar. you think of these fighters getting privileges like that? Does it just make you more determined to succeed? Uh, he just don't know how much I'm gonna be knocking at his door now. <laughs> if, if we get to fight with, if we get to fight with John Molina, he knocked John Molina out in the first round. My yeah. thing is to knock him out in the first round. Yeah, you'll be on the radar. So how did well, the sparring go with Kell Brook? Uh, it was a great experience. Kell Brooks is a big fucker, man. <laughs> God damn, that's a big welterweight. Mm. Mm. You impressive? Is are, are big, you impressed? What do you, what you think of his skill set? You impressed? Or is it just his size? Oh, very impressed. Very, no, he has skills. He has great skills. I mean, he's learning, and uh, he's an up-and-comer. Well, he's I been a he pro for nine Kevin years. Alexander if that fight would have ever happened. He's actually been a pro for nine years, so he's not an up-and-comer, really. He, when I say up-and-coming, he hasn't been exposed to the media on the, on the U.S. side. But I know he would have beat Devin Alexander easy. He would have knocked Devin out. Well, I wanted that fight to happen. Well, Devin ain't champion no more, so. No. It's so Sean we Porter. need to go ahead and get Sean Porter now. Yeah, you <laughs> think he can rattle Sean Porter? Oh, he'll kill Sean Porter. Wow. Okay. A lot of people don't believe Kelbrook's got it, but it's coming from somebody who's sparred with him. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people so what's the, he got it. Yeah, so what's the best part? Who's the, who's the like, I can't say best because it sounds like I'm being silly. Like, who would you say that the guy that you, you've you been in the ring with or maybe seen that the guy that you think, yeah, is this this guy's really good. Who are you impressed with? You know, we know about Floyd, but who, like, like, who are you impressed with? Hmm. In, in boxing, Danny right? Garcia. Yeah? Danny Garcia, he, he impressed me, yeah. Why? Yeah, tell tell the fans why, because you know everyone's listening to this. They want to hear what Chop tries to say about Danny. Go ahead. Why? Why Danny? Uh, working with Danny for the Zad Judah fight, I mean, it just showed me how physically strong Danny is and how he make adjustments and adapt to whoever's in front of him. And he proved that after he beat Zad Judah and he fought Lucas Matisse. I fought Lucas Matisse. And I'm a smaller guy, so when I looked at Lucas Matisse and I looked at Danny, I didn't think Danny was going to be able to beat Lucas the way he did. He took Lucas and picked him apart. So you impressed with So Danny? he really impressed me. Who, anyone else? Like old school? Like, I mean, my favorite is Sugar Ray Robertson and, and some other people I've been discovering as well. But like old school then, who's the guy... When you came into boxing, which kind of guy were you look up to? Or you just came... Yeah, you know what? Let's go back there. How did you get into boxing? I got into boxing. I just wanted to win trophies. It wasn't no reason to fight. Because I was short and I couldn't play. I wasn't good in basketball. I don't like football. I like one-on-one sports. I'm more competitive, like swimming. I was a swimmer. I was on the swim team. Um, the reason I got into it was to win trophies. There was no other reason. And that was that was my eager and my desire that made me motivate myself even more. Just to win the trophy, I was excited. Mm. Yeah. Uh, did did you have an aptitude for the sport? Did you pick it up quick, or did you have to work on it harder than other people? I didn't work hard like you say hard in the gym, but every day I practiced. I went to the gym and I trained, and then when I went home, I got in the mirror and I practiced some more. The okay. fighter today, these the young fighters that are coming up now who are boxing at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, once they go home from boxing practice, they don't practice no more. What made me as good as I am now, I practiced when I went home also. I done exercise when I got at home. It just wasn't about going to the gym and training and practicing. When I got home, I ate dinner. Then after dinner was over with, I would go in the bathroom 
and I would work on doing dips. I work on just jabbing, throwing a crawl, just the basic combinations. So we're, we're asking enough questions. So where'd you get your name from? Where'd Chop Chop come from, bro? It's a nice name, you know. Like, you know what? And I, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. You see your costumes. I know, like, I'm going back a bit. But you see your costumes, yeah? That's the thing to me when I makes me remember Chop Chop. The costume you came out with, the Floyd, and the costume you came out with, uh, the Cotto. Man, that costume and the gas mask. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, shit, that, that shit's still in my head like an alien. Like, you know what I mean? And you had, the, like, the Roman... That shit was, that shit was, like, that was so, you know, that costume was like, hey, I ain't never seen that, but let's go back to the name. How, yeah, where did Chop Chop, the Chop Chop name come from? Uh, it was 1986, I got the name Chop Chop. We were in the Nashville Silver Gloves. We were in Nashville, Tennessee, and we had just arrived. And before we get to go out to eat, everyone had to check their weight to see how much they weigh. I got on the scale. I was only 11 years old. And I was fighting at 65 pounds then. I got on the scale. I weighed at 65 pounds flat. So I'm right on weight for the weigh-in tomorrow morning. My trainer said, Chop, okay, we go out and eat. I want you to eat light, okay? You can't eat a lot because you got to make weight in the morning. I said, okay. We went out to eat. We went to Burger King. I supposed to have a salad, and that was it. I had salad, french fries, a frosty, a, um, a burger. I just had a, I, I just ate, and I put on 10 pounds worth of weight. Yeah. I got on the scale the next morning. I was weighing 75 pounds. My trainer said, you chopped that food up. <laughs> now you got to move up in weight. You got to move up in weight and fight the bigger guys. And I know exactly who I fought because I never forget him. Danny Ramirez. Danny Ramirez. Oh, is that? Danny. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's how you came up with your name? Beats. Oh, beat yourself. Ah, oh, what the heck? Is that how you came up with the name? <clears throat> that's how my trainer gave me that name, Chop Chop. Because I chopped that food up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so when, you, when, you say, when you say, I don't see where the weight go and... <laughs> Do I eat? I, I eat everything. Man. I don't turn down nothing but my collar when it comes to food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. All right. Okay. You see, at the stage you are now with trainers, is it? do you have to rely on a trainer now or do you just need someone just to oversee what you're doing? Because by now, you're an experienced vet. <laughs> it's, it's, you're the first person that's mentioned that and say that. Yes, it's just an overseer now. It's not so much training that can be done to me. I just need an overseer to see little mistakes that I'm making in there. That's it. Yeah. You see, why I ask you that is because you see guys like Amir Khan. He goes from trainer yeah. to trainer. And from somebody who hasn't been in a ring, I see it like if you can't work out most of it after you've been doing it so long, it's not a great look, is it? You should be independent. Uh, man, yeah. For for Amir Khan, they're looking they're looking to help help him. They want someone to try to fix the mistakes. And some mistakes can't be fixed. You have to fix them yourself. And only he can do that. A trainer can help you, but he can't do it for you. He can show you how or give you pointers and give you advice, but it's up to you to do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. So what keeps you motivated, man? Because, like, what, what's, what's your goals that you achieve? You know, you've already been a world champion. What, what's keeping you going? Because it ain't, you don't seem like you're slowing down, boy. You're in, good, you're in great shape, and it seems like you're even getting better, man. I'm, I'm going to lie, that, that Klusky performance, you scared the whole of England with that one. So, <laughs> so <laughs> how far, how, how long, I'm serious, man. That shit, I'm telling you, that was, a, that was a, like, I, I uploaded that on YouTube, yeah? Man, that was a classic old school performance, man. Like, so how, 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 how long do you reckon you're going to go on for? And what, what do you want to achieve? You want to be another world champion? What, what's your goal? You want to unify the belt? Let, let, let the people know. My goal and what's keeping me motivated and drive is my body is so young that I can still do it at the level where I was 19 years old. And it motivates me more. I know I can capture another world title at a lighter weight class. 
I can do it at 135 where I should have been when I first turned pro. I turned pro at 140 and I fought 139 in the amateurs. But no one never told me, all you have to do is fight at lightweight. You don't have to make 135 until you fight for the title. So all the other weight players are going to be 137, give or take a pound. Mm. Mm -hmm. You just figured it out now, yeah? <laughs> it's, good. it's good it's good though it's good. you know what I mean it, you know it, it, the thing is you got a lot of experience now but so at the lightweight division uh, you want, I know you're Omar Figueroa but who you want if you can't get that fight because they uh, already vacated the belt of Adrian Broner so you're trying to fit in and when when are you next in the ring Have you, you have, I know you ain't got a point so you know when you're going to get in the ring or you're just trying to sort all that stuff out right now I uh, know which we scheduled for March the 21st, uh, Fantasy Spring Hotel Casino, that's Indy Ho, California, mm -hmm. and that fight is supposed to be on ESCN, Friday Night Fight. Oh, that's going to be lovely, man. We're going to get a post fight with you, but uh, we, ain't, we ain't leaving you alone, man. We're going to, well, after this, uh, we listen, you're going to be all over the internet, yeah, your words getting out, so we're going we, we gonna to keep chasing you around and keep a, keep a tab on your creator. Hey, when you get big, because you know you're going to cause that big upset on one of these young guys here, don't disappear on us, though, Chop Chop. I ain't gonna forget, and I ain't gonna disappear. You got my number. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's number changes when you're rich, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm you, that, yo, you know, how to, you know how to find me on Facebook. That don't change. Instagram nah, don't change. Nah, I'm playing with you, chop chop. Now, nah, man, we nah, man. <laughs> nah, we, we know because I clip, man. You, you, the way it is, you, you know, we we yo. If you look well, like, like look the lightweight. You get your belt there. You're a two weight champion. It's gonna be great, you know. And you there's still challenges at 140. You know, wherever you go, I'm sure you're going to be a success, man. And, I, hey, man, I've been checking out your Facebook, man. Your, your fashion gear is off the chain. I'm still on that, that, that uniform <laughs> you was wearing, man, to the ring, man. The gas mask. So where'd you come up with that <laughs> yeah. idea? Yeah, the gas mask. Like, that, that shit was, like, when you come out, that shit was unique, bro. Like, gas mask. And, like, you was wearing, like, camouflage and shit. You know, you out Don Floyd. You out Don Floyd. You out Don Floyd. Yeah, go ahead. That, that material, I got that material. I had just got back from... Australia working with Casa Zoo. Uh. Um, that was in February. I went back to the U.S. and I picked that material up from the Army Fatigue Store. They use it to cover up the, the vehicles out there in the desert. Yeah, that's right. That's where it looked from. That's what I knew it from the Army. Yeah, it was cold. That was that was that was real camouflage mesh material. Yeah, yeah. So I had them to take it apart and make a uniform out of it. Oh man, that's <laughs> oh man! You out down Floyd that night in dress. So I'm telling you, man. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, anyone, anyone that day. That's why they no one gonna forget you. You're you're a unique boy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you know, you're just full of style on that. And like like I said, you you know you you stun, you buzz Cotto, you buzz Floyd. You know what I'm saying? And you still around. You still you you know you shock some uh, island uh, island guy who gave Ami a car fight. You know what I mean? You still on the scene, so. We appreciate. I appreciate talking to you right now. You guys want to drop another question to Chop Chop? Go ahead. No, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I appreciate you spending some time for us and sharing. I really appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Go to you. Go to YouTube and um, look up. Uh, what was it? Robert Garcia. I beat Robert Garcia nephew in October. Just passed. Okay. Oh, Javier Garcia, the young kid Javier Garcia. He uh, okay. he killed the fighter. Last year, that's the fighter that um, killed the guy in the ring. I just okay. stopped him in the seventh round. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that. Is, is that is that up on YouTube somewhere? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find that. Oh, you will. So we're gonna, gonna watch that definitely, man. Definitely yeah, chop, that. chop, chop, man. Like you still, hey, for the Friday night fights, beats are echoing up, isn't it? Echo. For the chop, someone's echoing. Hey, for the Friday night fights, Chop Chop, what are you going to wear for that one, man? You going to bring the camouflage back? You going to bring a style, bro? What are you going to do for that one? Um, it won't be the camouflage. It's going to be some nice for the colors, though. The weather's changing for March, so it got to have some nice colors, too. It's going to be nice, though. It's going to be different. Yeah, I'm looking different forward. Different from any other fighter uniform out there. It's going to be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. That's what I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to the <laughs> could dress, I'm Looking right? forward to the fight, too. I hope you get old Ron Figueroa this year, too. I'm hoping I'm going to chase him. I might have to move to California just to get him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after you shy, after you get your win, you're going to shy him out on Friday night fights. Not loud. You the, oh, are yeah. you the main event? You're the main event, right? They negotiate me or even Soto. 
Yeah. Toto Lopez may be the manager. They don't know which one yet. Hopefully it's you, man. Like, you the bigger name, boy. Shit, you big name, yeah, yo. I know. Everyone knows Chop Chop. <laughs> you know, like, you the, the, Rick, I mean, the reason why they met, I, like I said, they were meant to you with Ricky Hatton. Because you was a WBO champion, they were looking to go that route. So they said, yeah, Chop Chop. And, you know, they were looking at you that time. That's why I know about you that time. And, like I said, you put in a great performance against Floyd and the Cotto. You know what I mean? Two, two of the toughest guys in the division. So you ain't scared of no one. Ready to face anyone nah. at any time. You know, you ain't no journeyman either, because, you know, I don't know that you get enough time to prepare as well for these fights. Do you get, do they give you enough time for the fights? But you always, that's why you're always in shape, because you're ready to go, innit? That's why I stay ready, man. You never know when, when I won the title, I took the fight on a five day notice. I was yeah. in the gym training. Yeah. We got a phone call Tuesday. Do you want to fight this guy for the title? It's on Showtime. I said, yeah, I'm ready. Let's make it happen. Yeah, that's why they don't want you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they don't want you because they know because they, 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 the buzzers, they know you ain't out of shape. Because after what you did in England, they were like, damn, this kid, nah, nah, nah we ain't getting him. Because they, you, they <laughs> thought, they thought, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I saw the man, they thought they're going to chop, chop. Yeah, he's going to come over and we're going to make it. Like, they thought, man, you, you, listen, you upset the whole thing. Like, he ain't, you know, he still hasn't recovered from what you did to him. You know, his career's finished, though. You know that. You know, you actually finished the guy's career. I'm just letting you know that. Right? Well, we got, we got to find somebody else for me to fight over in England. <laughs> Make sure, you talk to, make sure you talk to Frank Warren and Eddie Hearns, man, so we can set something up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well definitely. But definitely. That's, that's, that's for real. For real. I'm going I'm to do that. I'm going to do that, man. All right. And, um, yo, Chris, you want to uh, you wanna seal it up with Chop Chop? And, and, um, yeah, I'm going to seal it up. Go this ahead. is Chris Caban with We Live, Eat, Sleep, Boxing on Facebook. Signing off with Chop Chop Corley, Boxing Beats and Rhymes, and Earl Jarrett. All right, Peace. man. Take care, champ. All right, talk to you. All right, peace.